There's nothing more precious in professional sports, any athlete will tell you, than opportunity. This team, to date, has seen nothing but blessings in that category. Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Steelers. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into hockey and or baseball. I also offer daily shots on the other two teams in town that I cover, the Penguins and the Pirates, and I hope you'll check those out as well. You can't make an impression on anyone as a football player, as an NFL player, if you can't get off the sideline. Yeah, you can have nice practices, you can do special things in drills, you can wow your coaches in the classrooms with how you've studied the film. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Not even close to comparing the impact of getting out there on a Sunday and making stuff happen. Call me crazy, but I think a big reason the Steelers are 3 and 0 is that they've had a handful of situations where opportunity was presented and really seized, and not just among the bottom of the depth chart types like Scotty Miller. It's not at all what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Broderick Jones struggling, then Troy Fautanu coming in there replacing him and shining. Troy gets hurt, Broad gets motivated, Broad goes out there and just knocks, it wasn't just Nick Bosa, he knocked everybody down all day, really graded out well. Well, now he's the right tackle. He's the starting right tackle. He's got one position. And as he said yesterday on the south side, he thinks that's going to help him. Uh, Yeah, you know, playing one side is is also a big factor. And, you know, not being able to, you know, just hone in on on your skills and not switching from side to side every, you know, so often. So, you know, it is good just being on one side. You know, we're just going to continue to try and build from there. Good. Got the opportunity. Seized it. Nick Herbig. Just seizes every opportunity he doesn't get nearly as many as he should and you of course hate to see a sturdy defender like alex highsmith go down but i feel like there's a risk reward factor that's being underappreciated by mike tomlin and the coaches when it comes to herbig they're so worried about how he'll defend the run that it seems like they just ignore All the incredible things that he's doing around that. Now, depending on how long Highsmith is going to be out with that groin, we're going to see more, a lot more of this kid. Even if it doesn't instantly elevate him to Canton, he's going to be a better player for it come December when the games get tougher. Opportunity comes in all kinds of forms. If the Steelers had acquired Brandon Ayuk, then they would have had WR2. As it is, didn't happen. Calvin Austin gets that opportunity. Cal catches the 55-yarder to stick the dagger in the Chargers and showed some other stuff as well. If he's not out there, if that's not schemed up for him by Arthur Smith, it can't happen. How about Najee Harris? Now, I know he can be a little bit frustrating, especially in the first half. You know, all those one and a half yards in a cloud of dust, nothing plays on first down. But Jalen Warren's been banged up for almost all of the preseason, for almost all of the regular season to one extent or another. And then he told me Sunday he's getting an MRI on his knee, which is new. What Najee's done in the interim and what he's always done best uh, is to just pound the other team. He wears them down. He himself described it a week ago as being akin to a 15-round fight. He might not get them right away, but he'll get them later on when they're tired of being knocked down. And if he hadn't asserted himself as a top-shelf NFL running back before this, although I would take issue with anybody who'd suggest that, he sure is now. He sure is now. The quarterback's getting all the attention, but it's the running back who's still the engine. And speaking of the quarterback and seizing opportunity, this isn't at all how the Steelers drew this up. And I'm going to guess this isn't at all how the Steelers thought this would play out purely from the perspective of Justin Fields' own performance. But here he is, and there he goes. And if that opportunity hadn't opened up a day 
after Tomlin declares Russell Wilson to be his starter. Not pole position. He's been referencing that again lately. Uh Uh-uh. There's no backseas on this. Tomlin said before the first game in Atlanta that Russ was QB1. Well, he isn't. And it's on merit. And as much as I'm sure the Steelers would embrace having Russ back in the picture and on the sideline and whatever else, if he hadn't gotten hurt, Fields is stuck to the sideline holding a clipboard, and we don't see any of this. But to his credit, to this kid's credit, he'd been doing this since the opening drills in Latrobe. Every time something would happen, every time Russ wasn't available for this or wasn't available for that, there was number two, all the way ready, all the way prepared from the standpoints of the playbook, of getting to know his teammates, of working with them as if he was going to be QB1, not out of arrogance, but just to be ready. That's, that's the, and if that isn't the best example in the NFL in 2024 of seizing an opportunity, I don't know what is. When we come back, J1Q. This segment of Daily Shot is brought to you by our good friends at Mike's Beer Bar. They're located on Federal Street, directly across from PNC Park. Mike has more than 500 beers on tap, including from more than 50 local breweries. Stop in and say hello. Tell Mike we sent you. Mike's Beer Bar. Welcome back. You know, in hindsight, I declare that entire segment to be null and void since I omitted Corliss Waitman. How could I do that? How could I see Cam Johnston go down when Waitman come in and just boot nothing but 52 yarders exactly where he wants them inside the 20 touchbacks, whatever, with almost no net returns and not even sneak into that segment? How awful. If I could make myself do laps for that, I would, but I'm actually not going to. Today's J1Q comes from Kai, who says, DK, I want to reignite the theme of the Monday morning quarterback and ask, do we think Justin Fields is now in pole position for QB1 since he's 3-0 and in Russell Wilson's absence? He's had one fluky turnover in three games. Uh, two out of those three wins came on the road. Is this a repeat of the end of last year when Mason Rudolph, who was Ironically, also number two was named starter over Kenny Pickett, took over the job through the playoffs. Do the Steelers keep the consistency and continuity with Fields, or do they eventually roll the dice with Wilson when healthy? I could give you like a two or three word answer and end the show, Kai, but I'm not going to do that because it would come across as rude. I don't see anything here. I don't see a controversy. Media types who don't cover the team, or in some cases don't cover anything, as in they just talk about sports, are going to no doubt try to drum up something here because it makes for, well, really the best debate in football. Who's your quarterback? That's always the best debate in football. And it's a hard one to not go to. I'm not going to lie. I see the numbers spike on this program whenever I bring up one or both quarterbacks, and then I watch them nosedive when I proudly invest an entire episode in the offensive line or something like that. I don't I, I don't care. I'm just going to do the same show. But I liked the very last thing that you brought up there, that being the potential awkwardness of at any point. Tomlin just saying, "Eh, forget it. Let's just go to Russ." Or, you know, even, you know, Fields has a bad game. Like maybe even a really bad game. And Tomlin seizes upon that to go back to Russ or to go to Russ since he's never really had him out there. I don't see that. I just don't. I've been speaking on this program for almost a month now that this is Fields' offense. And my feeling is that it's becoming increasingly his offense with each passing week. And I don't just mean in the intangibles or who respects his voice in the huddle and that sort of thing. I mean the actual offense. Did you notice, for example, that there were more designed runs 
for Fields than in the first two games combined. Now, they didn't go well, but that's not my point here. My point is that the offensive coordinator is starting to make the offense look more like a Fields offense, as opposed to one that's geared toward a 36-year-old working off rollouts. Well, the more you go down that road, the more comfort level the offense develops for what it is that you're doing in general, the more you're committing to fields. So I'll leave it there before I end up accusing myself of what I just accused everybody else of doing. There's nothing here. Fields is the quarterback. I'd like to see Tomlin state that out loud at today's press conference, but I don't think that he thinks he can because of the way he backed himself into a corner word-wise recently and saying, until Russ is all the way healthy, I'm not going to have anything for you on this. But we'll see. He's surprised before. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Steelers. Going to do another one of these tomorrow. And make sure at 4 p.m. today and every weekday, you're tuning in for my new Double Shot show, available on every platform, like everywhere. 